Alright guys, uh, welcome back to DTEC. Uh, tonight we will be doing a ECM clone job for one of my friends. And it's going to be my first time uh, doing one of these GM E69 is what they're, I guess, called or referred to. But in reality, obviously we can see a Bosch unit there and the number. So that number is what you need to... Uh, used in order to identify the type and style or actual identification of the ECM in order to find out the procedure. So after I researched that number, um, either online or on the tool, um, it calls this type of ECU uh, an ME 9.6.1 and it's a GM product, clearly, as we can see. This one particular, I think, is out of a 10 Buick Lacrosse. Um, I'll have to double check. But so, with that, uh, I am going to use the OBD Star because uh, it says that it can do it. But uh, I needed an extra adapter that. I didn't have up to this point, so I had to order this in to get this job done. And I've got a couple other ones that can use this. Um, I think initially this MP101 module unit was available, uh, but it I don't think it came with this extra board and harness. So basically this is an add-on extra adapter that will give you a wider range of basically accessibility to uh, continue on performing um, reading and writing procedures on a wider range of ECU modules. So with this here now uh, we can go ahead look up the connection diagram and get started. So you'll still need these leads and the OBD cable that goes here to the unit that comes in the original tool kit. Um, this harness uh, comes with the MP001. So I'll connect my 12 volt to the main unit here. Out there and it seems to have powered up this unit and let's see so again this is my first time using that uh, particular adapter and as I was saying um, you can punch in that Bosch number when you're in the ECM portion of the tool you just go here it tells you the uh, number that you're looking for so you hit OK. It has to be online, obviously, to search. And I think it's still there. So those are some of the ones I've researched already. And this one ends in 772. So look, it's the latest one. So you'll punch that in, hit OK, and it will search and tell you the type of Bosch ECU that it is. So we are looking at them at and MED961. And then uh, let's see, just to show you. So if we go in, and this is at the beginning uh, where all ECs are available. If we go here and we want to shortcut it, M E, let's put D, 9.6. Point one, which it brings that up there, and then down here at the guide is just kind of a description of setup of how to make your connections, what adapters you'll need, uh, so on and so forth, in order to complete the job. So you can use one of two adapters. These are the only two that will read this computer. So that MP001, which is the one we got. And then that P003 plus, that one will also work. 
Um, obviously, we're using that one. We'll go back. And now we go down here to pinout, which uh, you use this to identify the way your actual computer looks like. Um, and you can zoom in here also. And you can tell it says E69 there and so on and so forth. So physically it looks the same. Labeling seems to be the same. And let's see. So next image is going to give us our connection diagram. And there's a third image. And it's another connection diagram. But apparently there's a couple of different versions. And there's two different connection types in order to get the job done. All of them are the same minus one of them. So if you look at this one here, the GPT-0. And it's down here. So it's uh, pin 35. And let's go to image 2. It goes to pin 30. So you have one of two options. The power ground K-line, GPT-1, all stay the same. And when you run into these situations, just try one. If it doesn't work, move on to the next one. So I've got it set up for this first connection type, the one in image 2. We'll see if that will work. And once we are all set up, we go down here and hit start. Only one option, and here you tell it which adapter you're using. MP001, hit OK. And let's see what this will do. Alright, so now once we are in this menu. Alright, so now once we are in to this menu, we will hit, let's see, connect. Again, it's telling you it's only supported by specific uh, adapters. And just to show you, we are getting activity there. So that's a good sign. Looks like it's checking the firmware in that adapter, that in that module unit. And this one, it, it kind of just gives you the steps of the procedures of what it's doing. And we are kind of holding idle there. Let's see. All right. So let's see. It looks like out of the gate we picked the correct one uh, as far as our connections. Because, so let's see, external flash chip was detected. Obviously it's a good sign. It's got to communicate in order to detect stuff in it. And then obviously connection is successful. So, with that, uh, I am currently connected to the one my friend sent down. This is his original. That's the donor that was ordered in. So, we clearly want to save our information from the donor. Uh, excuse me, from the original. Uh, let's go ahead and read external EEPROM. That was a quick read. Um, let's see. All right, we'll save that. Yes. And so down here to finish. Uh, next, we will read the flash. Uh, most of the time, these take a while. It's much, much bigger um, file type information. You could tell it's going through all the sectors, um, you can tell that it's going through sectors, reading, checking them, saving it, um, and it counts up. Um, the one thing, it's out of 46 sectors, uh, and there's your status bar. So there's uh, quite a bit of reading for it to do, so I will let this run and bring you guys back. All right, so... That actually wasn't too terrible. Didn't take as long as I thought. but uh, So we've got that read clearly. And move over to the donor. Alright, so uh, one thing I forgot to mention beforehand. Um, before you unplug and everything, you want to go ahead and hit disconnect. 
and then once it gives you the confirmation that be uh, good to unplug and disconnect go ahead and do so uh, you want to make sure you basically get the uh, programmer and stuff out of that mode so with that said I've got the donor all connected same way we are now going to connect our power source we don't forget that and then let's go ahead and hit connect all right so that's a good sign at least for the donor uh, we are able to uh, read and get in um, one thing let's see we go to hex editor okay so this pulls up the last read that you did um, which was the flash one thing I want to look for so let's see external EEPROM and I'm just curious to see if we find a VIN number okay so there we go we've got a VIN number there let's keep that in mind so 330 is from the original um, one that we want to see be written into this donor uh, nothing's been written I've just pulled up the hex uh, data from the uh, external EEPROM uh, to look for the VIN number so let's keep that in mind 330 and let's back out let's see actually we go to function not the back button uh, what, now we want to tell it that we want to perform an action so obviously we want to write uh, EEPROM and in this asks you where you want to bring it from uh, in the hex editor we have the original one but just to show you we'll go there to look for one which again is the same area but just to verify and make sure so external EEPROM original one actually let me stop there <laughs> uh, be, I'm getting ahead of myself let's not perform a write let's read you always want to read and save your donor in case of any issues so let's go ahead and read again pretty pretty quick and let's label this as the donor and then we can check the VIN number on this one also and I'll do the same with the flash alright guys so we've successfully read the donor both the EEPROM and the flash let's just double check um, so that's gonna be the last read which was the flash let's load this guy here so this is the EEPROM from this donor look for the VIN number there we go 803 that's what is in this donor so that's what we pulled here from there that's what we want to see change uh, in order to verify as best as we can here on the bench that uh, we've cloned successfully so uh, that's the one that we want to see go to a 330 all right so we'll go back to function now we want to go ahead and write EEPROM definitely want to load not uh, pull from the hex editor so we want the original one All right, so we are gonna write. It should be quick. There we go. Uh, now we want to write the flash. 
And just like uh, reading, I'm assuming this will take quite a bit of time. There's uh, 46 sectors. Uh, looks like it's moving pretty quick. So if a sector seems to be the same, uh, so it'll compare the one that is in there now and the one that it's writing from. If it's the same, it just goes over or past it, skips it, whatever you want to call it. And the ones that are different, looks like right there, as it's telling you, it erases the sector and writes it over with the one that you are providing. So we got pretty far uh, up to sector 36, and now it's finding differences, and it's now writing over those. All right, so writing in a flash was uh, definitely quicker than I was expecting. Um, at this point, we are 100% completely over and done with performing uh, an exact one-to-one -one clone, full clone of the computer. Let's go ahead and just hit this connect. We want to kind of just finish the whole job, like performing the job. Uh, I want to go back in, read the EEPROM, and see if it changed to that 3.3.0. So we're pretending that we're going to reconnect. Going into this one that we just cloned. And it, that step's probably something you don't even have to do. You could probably just go ahead and read from uh, there without having to end the procedure. All right, so just like before, we are in. So we want to read um, this one. And I don't want to save it because it should be the same. But I'm wondering if it will pull up the hex after reading it. Okay, so it did. Maybe so. Let's see. Okay, so it still says 803, but if you look at the name here, that's the last one that was saved. That's still from the last one because it's pulling up one that was saved. It's named. You can read it there. It's, it's a named one. So it's not the one from this uh, last read. So in order to be able to put them in the hex editor, you have to save it. So let's go ahead and, and save just to uh, verify the VIN number change. All right, so you can tell our name changed. That's what we're pulling up. Let's look for the 330. Boom, there we go. All right, so that gives us 100% confidence that we've performed a complete one-to-one -one clone um, using the MP001 with the OBD Star 706. Uh, we'll let you get an E69GM computer clone. So that is all on this one. Hope you uh, got something out of it, picked up some good info and know the uh, capabilities of this tool uh, with performing this job. So uh, thank you for watching and that is all.